guys, welcome back. So we are in the lobby for Habitation Station. It is the first map of this series, Stats versus Rush Crazy. So I'm gonna get that up. Luckily, it's really not that difficult when there's only two of them. Let's hope it shows up correctly the first time. But it is Habitation Station, so it's not like the positions really matter. Stats looked pretty dominant versus Max said, and I mean like actually crushed him. Rush Crazy had a bit of trouble against Max said, but mostly dealt with him okay. There is a little difference of just how well it did go, and it definitely was one of the things that went in favor of stats. So for stats, I think he's gonna take this 2-0 as well. But I'm hoping that Rush Crazy might actually showcase a little of his Again, like, it wasn't, like, the, the greatest micro, the greatest macro, but it was good reads and, I think, good pacing on the PvP matchup. And maybe I'll get something done there. At, at the very least, I'm expecting him to kind of match stats up to a certain point and then, yeah, fall behind. Or he'll just cheese. In the top right is the blue Protoss. He is stats. In the top left as the green Protoss. He is rush crazy. Covering his name a little bit looks a little ugly. There we go, that's better. So, uh, he did set a very early pro, but it is not going to be for anything suspicious. It is going to be for super early scout, which is a little bit odd because, again, you don't expect the Korean player to cheese, although they absolutely can. It's like they have some of upstanding moral code or something like that, but it is usually like more or less more stereotypical for stats to have scouted him, uh, scouted rush crazy early but stats isn't too worried about dying to something like the cheesiest you can ever possibly be which would be like a proxy gateway as that just you know isn't very good in the first place and there's no one does it anyway because of the first reason <laughs> in the second place i think stats will only be a little bit worried when it comes to those mid-game surprises so like a proxy gateway something that max to try to do or a stargate you don't expect but so far, Stats has expected everything from his last Protoss opponent. It might just happen here again in this PvP. The next matchup after this, this, is this third series of the day, will be Stats versus Keen. So finally, not a Protoss. Actually, have our Terrans come back here. Keen didn't look so hot versus Protoss yesterday, but he was against a pretty good Protoss in the form of Showtime. So that would have been always, always been difficult. Openings have been chosen. Okay, depth, adepts for both players. Stats just a little bit quicker on like everything here. Oh, behind one probe. Oh dear God, what's gonna happen there? A militia core is gonna come out. The adepts gonna shade, maybe past each other. I think generally that is what's what's gonna happen because the assumed, the assumption is that the next two units you're getting. So for stats, you know, it's stalkers will be enough to stop your opponent's two adepts. Same thing for Rush Crazy deal, except that he doesn't go for Stalkers, he goes for Adepts. The one really nice thing about Stalkers is that they have that nice range. They can actually try and chase and poke on the Adepts, where Adepts versus Adepts, obviously, like, same speed, same range. If they're out of range, they're out of range, I feel. The Adepts from Stats aren't only going to get maybe some damage done, they're also maybe going to be able to scout the Stargate. Now, remember, Protosses have reduced vision on their shades, which is very annoying. Militia Core is trying to get some damage on the other side of the field, so that's where the Adepts had they maybe gone straight for the mineral line, had actually been able to kill four or five probes. This Militia Core was hoping for two or three probes, but unfortunately, Stats is ready with it, so it doesn't even get one and has to be recalled and is now down a little bit in that health. This Adept probably could have gotten one of the probes, but ducked out of there and is obviously going to die for it. And not much can really be said about these openers, but hold on a second. Rush Crazy is pretty crazy. He's gonna go for a gold base. The most difficult thing about this gold base, besides being away from your reinforcement point, of course for Protoss and Withamp Locate, what is the reinforcement point, is that if they ever take control of this area, you just won't be mining. So, you know, especially in TBT, that just, you know, once they control that area, it's impossible. In PvP, they're gonna have to wait for the warp prism, but, you know, mid-game PvP, they're gonna have a warp prism, so... 
It's just a dangerous maneuver. It might scare Stats for a second when he looks back to this natural and goes like, wait a minute, you don't have a natural? But I think the next thought will be, okay, does he, would he take that gold base? And well, the answer that we know is, yeah, he would take that gold base. What's so funny about this too is that while well, usually the observer goes right across the middle of the map and would see this, this observer is actually looking more for what's immediately outside of his nexus. And even if it did go out uh, across the map now, it wouldn't go through the uh, gold base. So it's a little weird. Oracle gets into that main base, gets two, three, three probe kills, but does get out of there. And I would say that Rush Crazy is already giving stats more of a run for his money than Max Ed did. This is a questionable shade in, however, he wanted the sentry and he does get it. So was that worth three adepts? Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Let's try to go back in with his oracle. <clears throat> Which uh, kind of worked out. I mean, five kills in that thing. Or in total, rather. Three kills in the oracle. Again, almost what is like the bare minimum for, you know, making an oracle. I guess the bare minimum is just that they get revelation, but also a couple more probe kills. As that gold base has been taken and is now getting saturated, you won't need quite as many probes to have that full saturation, highest income possible going on. That's the real benefit of it. Rush Crazy already investing into his extra gateways. He's actually been building up his Void Ray count. It'd be very shocking to see him go for a third one, but it's already shocking that he went for a second, much less a you know, first one. If he's proxy the Stargate and he's obviously going for a bus, okay, yeah, absolutely go for Void Rays, but the fact that he's going... Uh, making them at home to then move across the map is like a little weird and is going to, I think, surprise stats a lot. He still doesn't know about this gold base, by the way, but he also didn't bother scouting the natural since the first time he scouted it, so. He's just going to assume there's a natural somewhere and still won't know how powerful that natural is. Oh, the proxy pylon is set. Stats is going a little bit greedy this time. Every single time up for a fast third base in that last series, it's because he absolutely could. He had taken such a good early game lead. He snipes the Oracle that had no energy, tries to snipe the Void Ray, but in not doing so, there we go. That Void Ray got a lot of extra damage done, but the Stalkers might just be enough. The Adept are trying their best to take care of him. There's that very slow warp in. Yeah, the gateway's not quite done. Trying to make up for that, but Stats might have just had too big of an army, despite Rush Crazy's best attempts to get in there before he could. Stats holds with a third base, nonetheless. Two voters just weren't enough. And that pounce by stats is, I think, something that Rush Crazy was not expecting. If those void rays are actually, like, shooting from behind, just getting damage done, then suddenly, in, like, a blink of an eye, there's, like, four less stalkers. But it was kind of the reverse there. The blink stalkers jumped so quickly, the void rays actually went down quicker than Rush Crazy would have wanted. But I still like Rush Crazy's chances, too. Like, I feel like this guy... First of all, doesn't have that same, like, oh my god, I'm facing stats effect that might have affected Max Ed, but also isn't as, I want to say, like, hesitant about the PvP matchup. Whereas Max Ed was really just, like, not floundering, but just kind of, like, looked like he was being a little bit too secure when he shouldn't and too aggressive when he, when he shouldn't. Rush Crazy is doing some crazy things, and maybe he's a little bit aggressive, but I do think that he has more confidence in his actions, whether that's a good or a bad thing. There's the second game ready to go already. Whirlwind was his map choice. So a four-player map, I feel like this is the first time we've seen a four-player map today, and I don't wonder if it'll change anything up. We've seen, we've seen an aggression from everyone against stats, and stats just been fine trying to take a third base, and maybe he'll do the exact same thing again here. Or maybe he'll finally change it up. I mean, he's got to be getting bored too, right? <laughs> he's constantly defending and not doing very much. We'll see. In the top right, as the red Protoss, it is stats. In the bottom right, as the blue Protoss, he is rush crazy. Is he not in the wrong direction? Oh, he is rush crazy. There we go. So sometimes on four-player maps, you can see a bit of like shock and awe in the PvP matchup where they don't go for two gateway openers. It's still like the standard safe thing to do in PvP. Basically, for the last year and a half, people were experimenting a lot in the early stages of Legacy of the Void, as they should have been. 
and he saw a lot of like attempted one basics one gateway expands like like they used to do or you saw a lot of just all ins because a depth versus a depth was super crazy or you saw the cheesiest stargate timings possible but it's really calmed down into okay double gateway or you doing something kind of weird map specific or player specific stats is the one to scout very early this time i don't think he ever saw that the gold base was taken last game i don't think he would have had time to check either and tell that is a cheer sound bits thank you to nix of night for the 25 bits so i'm saying the sound is low um what i can do about that actually if the sound is even but it's overall low then I would have to boost my mic and then compensate the game sounds, which might be a little bit complicated. It's not not doable, but I think if I did it right now, it would bust a lot of people's eardrums, you know what I mean? And that just wouldn't be fair to everyone else. Well, Nexus is on the way. Stats is changing things up. He is going for a third gateway. I saw Max had try and do this, and then he wanted to add on that proxy pylon with a fourth gateway, but it was scouted and denied. That might still be Stats' plan here, too, as he puts down that pylon. The uh, probe here, yeah, absolutely should not get a scout on this. That would have just been the worst. It still scouted the lack of Nexus, and that should be very suspicious. Stats can still make it work, however. There is that fourth gateway. It's going to provide very fast warp-ins. And it should not be cancelled. Uh, Rush Crazy is going to scout it and confirm his suspicions, but because it's already on the way, unless he brought his entire army over here, which would be way too dangerous. I don't think he'd be able to kill a pylon fast enough. And of course not the gateway. And Stats' army is already coming to defend it, need be. Pylon has to come up on the front lines. Do like the rush crazy. Remember to do that. But he might even have to start pulling probes. Four stalkers going to try and target fire what they can. Mother's report is coming forward now. She only is going to have two boats and overcharges. One's already popped on a pretty weak pylon. Next time the stalkers come in here, they could probably snipe it without too much to say. For the boats and overcharge. If rush crazy could afford it, it might have been worth sending down a second pylon. But it's kind of questionable because it is only one more photon overcharge. And having more units might just be better. Fortunately, that pylon is solo. There is the snipe. And I think Rush Crazy just was a little bit bold in trying to defend the low ground for this. The Immortal is going to have to be a boss here, which I don't think it is going to be able to. There's just too few units to help, help it. It's going to be targeted down as quick as possible. Maybe kill two stalkers or not even come out at all. The pylon was pretty bad. GG. Stats will take another 2-0. Uh, looks like we got a sub, but it's not actually showing up yet, but let me check the Twitch alerts. Uh, no, Nightbot is just on the ball too much. Oh, there it is. SC2 Bren, thank you for the new sub. Well, this is going to be another changeover. The next best of three is going to be Stats versus Keen. And uh, they will be doing the vetoes uh, as we speak. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for giving me feedback about the sound and whatnot. I mean, if it really, like, if everyone says that it's, like, pretty low, I'll actually look into changing it. But I have, like, 50 50 on the responses so far. So, I'll see you guys uh, as soon as the lobby's ready to go.